Hi everyone, Jen Skinner from Toowoomba, Australia here. This is actually my third attempt to talk to you this afternoon, but my dog kept interrupting. So I've banished him from my art studio, and here I am solo with a bit of Ed Sheeran in the background to listen to. So, my favourite paper, and I'd say it's my favourite because it's the one that I replenished the most, is Canson Watercolour 300 GSM. Now this is A4 in size, but mostly I use A3 and cut it down. But I do sometimes um, buy this size as well, obviously. But they do, Canson does make watercolour with different GSMs. So if you're going to do anything other than pure watercolour, the 300 is what you want to go for. Now it's not a hot press, it's a cold press paper, which means it has texture to it. And I don't know that the camera is going to pick that up for you. Um, but it's it's got a texture. And to me it has a little bit more on one side than it does on the other. Now we're going to work simultaneously on two pieces of paper. So that you can uh, see um, or we can experiment and discover which inks that we're using this afternoon are water soluble and which ones are going to be more permanent for you. Now this was a happy background accident that I had a few days ago and it started out just as a background that I was going to put a face on but the more I looked at it I saw this little collection of ladies and I thought that looks like a friendship hug and so that's what ended up happening with it so this is called Friends. Uh, so we're going to see if we can end up with something similar to that this afternoon. So, dog's gone, music's going, and we're ready. So at the moment I'm just using a watercolour brush. Actually, no. Um, what we'll do first is we'll prime one of our pieces of paper. All right. So, what we're going to be using is a translucent gesso. Now, this one is by Holcroft. There's a lot of different ones on the market. And it says here that it has extra tooth. Now, you need to take note of that because clear gesso tends to sort of feel slightly sandy or grainy. It's a little bit like, um, um, almost like a bicarb soda when you feel it and depending on the brand as to how thick and granulated that tooth is. So this one says extra tooth. So it's, it's, um, uh, it's got a lot of um, texture to it. And what I'm doing is applying it with a scruffy brush to my paper. And there's a reason, a couple of reasons why I'm using a scruffy brush. One, is that I don't want a nice even coverage so I don't want a nice good brush that's going to spread the gesso on evenly I want to have a textured um, background and the other thing is the tooth actually eats your brushes you can see the end of this brush here has hardly any bristles left on it and that's because I use it with the clear gesso. So it started off as a filbert, about that size. What is it? It's a six. But it doesn't matter how wide the piece is, the gesso just eventually eats it all off. So you just need to be aware if you're going to work with clear gesso, any gesso really, but clear in particular, that it's going to um, disintegrate your brushes. Okay, so I just whizzed over that with um, my hair dryer to make sure that the gesso is dry, ready for the next stage. And what I have here is uh, Tim Holtz Distress Stains. They come in a multitude of colours. And I particularly like the uh, earthy ones. So we're going to start off putting some of that down onto our gesso paper
Then I'm going to get my scruffy brush again and it's wet and I'm going to spread the ink around. And we just want to cover all of the page. Not again, not evenly because we're after sort of a, an antique grungy kind of background. So here we are and what we need to do is get a nappy wipe and just sponge off a little bit of extra some of those paintbrush lines that started to appear. Doesn't matter if you get some fingerprints in it, that's fine. You can see mine on the side here from holding it. All right. So we're going to let that one dry and what we're going to do is put a little bit of the same ink on this piece of paper and we're going to label that and it's a Tim Holtz and it's the Distress Stain. There we go. Alright, both are dry now. So what we're going to have a look at is whether or not the Tim Holtz Distress Stain is permanent or water soluble. And I think that you can see it answers for itself. And I've just noticed I haven't used... Um, this pen before was one that I bought in Singapore when we were on holidays. So it's an Akashiya and it's obviously not permanent either. There we go. And sometimes that's imp like it's always important, but sometimes that's exactly what you want. You do want things to move. So if we were to spray this with water and then lay a stencil over the top we can actually because Tim Holtz is water soluble with just a little bit of water we can actually pull ink out now that hasn't shown up quite as much as I would have liked but we'll do a little bit more in a minute and we'll see. So we're starting to build up a little bit of texture. Again, that needs to be dried. Now, next ink we're going to use is, or try, is a Winsor & Newton. Now, this one here is called Nut Brown. So I'm just wetting my brush, dipping it in. There we go, nut brown, and we'll let that one dry. But what I'm going to do is actually just go for it, spread some of that nut brown, move it round again. We don't want to be even. I mean, if you don't want to use a brush, you can use a feather. Again, you can use a nappy wipe. Move it around. And what you can see happening here is that because the clear gesso went on in a random fashion, then various amounts of ink is actually seeping into the paper. So where there was most of the clear gesso, we would actually be able to rub a fair bit of the ink off whereas where it hasn't been any clear gesso it's really soaking through not quite onto the back yet but sometimes that will happen it'll go through to the back all right this one here was Windsor and Newton um, ink and it was nut brown 
and let's have a look. Um, I should remember to put the lids on straight away because I tend to knock them over. Again, I'm just getting water onto my brush and you can see the difference. There is in fact a little bit of movement but that could just be the dirty brush. But compared, oh, I've bumped some of the Tim Holtz. You can see the tiniest fleck of Tim Holtz moves and the Windsor and Newton has stayed pretty much right where it is. So that one is permanent. It's not water soluble. Now we're going to come over to this one and what we're going to do is put on some more of the translucent gesso. And I didn't mention before that what I do is take um, amounts of gesso out of the bigger containers and pop them into a little container just so that I'm not continually opening my big container and having air get at it and dry out. So I tend to just use small amounts in uh, little containers. It stops my bench from clogging up too. So what the clear gesso has done is put a coating down so that everything that's underneath the clear gesso is going to remain. If I'd put a really thick even coverage then I would always be able to apply paints and then rub back down to this. I'm wanting to be able to keep some of this but continue to build so I've added the clear gesso and now we'll play with something else. What I have is a Dela Rowney FW ink. Now they come in matte colours but they also come in pearlescent and I don't use the pearlescents very often. I tend to use the mattes and I mostly use uh, the, the sepias and brown. Let's put a little bit. This one is called Red Earth. So it has a dropper on it. Whoops, we better put a little bit over here. Okay, so again, I've wet my brush, dried it off a little. We're going to spread some of this red earth around. So I'll grab a stencil and I'm going to start rubbing some of that back. I don't want to lose all of it. So here we go. A little bit of scallop up here. I think I might put a few more the arrow design on and I'm still wanting to lose more so I'm going to add some water. cloth. I've been wiping my brush on. I don't know if you can So here we go. I'm still thinking I'd like a bit more of that red earth taken out. So I will go back to another stencil. Here we go. Same design, smaller. now we let them both dry. Now you won't see it in the camera I don't think but I've actually splattered that red ink all over this page so if it's water soluble it's going to move everywhere and you can see that it's not. 
the De La Rowney. Oops, I'm writing in <laughs> in wet on wet paper. And what did I say it was? Red Earth. So we've got two permanents there. I've got a Sennelia. I don't necessarily want to use it on my main piece, but we'll... Now I haven't bought this one for any other reason other than I like the colour. So I'll spread that round. And it is a sepia. We've got and I'm going to spread some of the sepia around. It's a little bit muddier, isn't it? building little bit by little actually it's interesting because that um, sepia almost felt sticky to my fingers unless I had something else on so wet the brush might get some cleaner water this time and it is moving so still not as much as the Tim Holtz but it's definitely um, water soluble. All right now looking at our mixed media piece I'm going to use another ink which I can absolutely guarantee is going to move and will always move. Well it stains but it just bleeds through everything and that is the Dilusions inks. So I just sprayed some of that into the container so I can get a little bit. All right, so we'll put put it there. Lemon zest this one is. I love it. You can, this is the second bottle I've gone through. Okay. We'll do. I don't think that's quite dry yet. Mm. What I'd like to do is get some more of the vintage stain. So what I'm going to do is squeeze my bottle. release some ink. Th these ones, the Distress Stains, have a little foam top, a little dabber on it. Sometimes they dry out, so if you just hold it in water, it should be fine. Now I'm going to spread a bit more of this on. Because I want to get some dark runs. Dry that one off. All right, let's see what we've got happening here. So nice, clean brush. I know what's going to happen. Have a look. All right, the Dilusions ink sprays always move and if we were to cover that in say a white gesso it would still come through it will just bleed through so here we've got a little bit of white gesso and you can put it on as thick as you like and it will continue to bleed up the only thing that will cover it fully is a black all right so we've got a 
good start and in understanding which inks are going to move and which ones are not on our little sample piece over here. And what we're going to do is continue to play with this one. What am I going to use here? I'm going to use a different sepia. This is the FW. So we'll have a look at that. Looks much, much darker than the Sennelier one. So I'm going to put a fair bit of that in. And I'm even going to put a tiny little bit of Matisse Black Gesso just on the side. I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush, but still a scruffy one. Now, Matisse Gesso is like tar. One container will last you forever. You can just keep watering it down. So I'm going to start putting a darker, grungy border. So I'm getting a little bit of the black gesso with the sepia. And I'm again not never am I being precise or careful with this because we're after that antique layered grungy and can you hear the brush on that it sounds like sandpaper Now we might want to deepen that up even further, but for now, that's a start. I'll hang on to that. I'm going back to the nappy wipe I was using before. And I'm just going to spread it around a bit so that I don't have brush marks. And I don't have any distinct lines. I've got a little bit of one there that's from the clear gesso. I really don't want to have any harsh lines at this stage. Now you can see I put wet on and it, it washed everything off to the clear gesso underneath. So I'm going to, there was so much water on the brush. And that's the benefit of the clear gesso. You can always get back to what you started with. Now, we've already looked at the FW and decided that they're not water soluble. And there you go, a little bit of yellow from the lemon zest. So if you want something that is permanent, that's not going to shift, that's the one that you want. Which means that this border, other than the fact that we've got clear gesso underneath, would in fact stay. If we didn't have the clear gesso as a resist to the paper and the inks, it wouldn't shift at all like it did there. Probably one last time, I'm putting a bit more of the clear gesso on because I really like what's happening. I don't want to lose it. I like the fact that it's lighter in the middle, starting to darken up around the outside. I'm putting a little bit more of a even coat, still random. I'm not doing it in distinct lines, still randomly applied. But that is fairly even. All right. So I'm going to have a look at this original piece 
that I did. And you can see that there's a little bit of a pattern in the girl's dress. Now it's only in that one, it's not hasn't shown up in any of the others, but that was a little bit of stenciling. Now I want to try and create that on this particular piece that I'm doing. So I'm going to have a look for a stencil. I think I might use this one. All right. I, I actually will use it upside down. Sweet and pretty. It looks like it should be used this way. So that's the way I'm going to use it. Now, what I want is to have a lighter, a lighter colour than this red earth, but I still want to stay in the same tone. So, what I've done, or what I'm going to do, is grab another ink that we haven't tried yet. So this one here is a Liquitex. We'll put a little bit of it over here. Smudge it around so that we can see what's going to happen. Now, in this container is a little bit of the De La Rowney green ink that a friend of mine used. And I know that it's not water soluble. It's not going to shift. So I can add another color into this container and know that I'm not going to taint it with the green. So I'm going to put a little bit of the red earth that I really liked and have already used and then I'm going to add yellow because I've already used a yellow. I'm staying in the same color with the same color palette but I want something that's a little bit more permanent and not going to keep bleeding up through like the ink would. So I'm mixing the two together and remember we've got clear gesso on here. So we're going to keep what's in underneath. And put some of that on. I'm going to move some of it around with my scruffy, dirty nappy wipe. Might even Get a little bit more so that's just using the brush now that I'm using this same nappy white because it's getting all the grungy colors together okay so we've got clear gesso and now what I want to do is dry this off a little bit didn't have to be totally dry, I just didn't want a whole heap of um, wet stuff coming up onto the back of the stencil. So now we're going to have a little bit of a play as to where we think the girls' dresses might be. And we're going to try and lift some of that ink up and if it doesn't seem to be coming up real well get, get a scruffy brush and rub in to remove the ink mm, still not happy that might be a little bit small so we'll go with another We'll go with another pattern. So what we're doing is trying to get off some of that ink from off the top of the clear gesso. Let's have a look. 
got a little bit of that off. Let's go for another light spots. Now, another thing we could do is instead of taking the ink off, we could in fact put more on in a lighter colour. But this is just another way of using um, the stencil. All right. Having a bigger surface area to rub through has worked better with that. So I'm going to go, I might even try a little bit of the chicken wire. And it's possible that I let the ink dry a little, like I hair dried it, but I might have let it dry just a fraction too much. But the idea is for it to faintly be there, not big chunks and really, really even. And I think if I'd persevered a little bit, I probably could have got it with the other ones. There we go. Um... Just to show you what I was meaning with a little bit of colour, and well I can do it with this one. Alright, I'm going to take a little bit of the ink and then use the stencil in a traditional way. And we're going to get another slight pattern. There we go. Alright, what we want to do is pop back over here and have a look and see. Whoops. Okay, so when I say whoops, where the yellow was still wet, it moved. Here it's still wet, so it's going to move with water. However, so we're looking at the Liquitex here. However, where the Liquitex had dried, there's no movement. scruffy brush. I want a little bit more yellow in here. Now we know that when it's dry it's not going to move so therefore I need to shift off what I don't want to remain. And those highlights have popped out more so that's great. And I still want to darken up the outside, so I'm going to go back to my mix of the FW. And what I want to see happen is to get a few um, leg drips. So I'm going to start. Might just do three, I think. Three people. Now, in my first piece, this was completely accidental. And I actually wiped over some of the drips so that it didn't look like there were legs without people. But because I liked the effect, it's a little bit hard for to capture in the 
film because I need to hold it up to get the ink to run. Okay. Wipe the bottom off. Okay, so now we're back and ready to find our friends on this page. And I'm thinking that what I'd like to do is start uh, by working out where the legs are going to be and deciding how many um, friends there will be. So I've got a pair of legs there and I'm looking at the drips that we created earlier. So I appear to have another set of legs there. Got some really long legs here. And I actually think at the moment that possibly there's another another pair of legs here. Now you don't need to put feet on them. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. Doesn't matter if they're angled slightly. Alright, so I'm going to do a skirt here for this one. And I'm looking for where I think her head might be. I might do this lady's I'm saying ladies because I've got them in stylized dresses. Um, Alright, here we go. So I'm thinking maybe a head there. Head and shoulders. Down. This lady might even have, she might even have her head on her shoulder. That looks good. So I'm thinking one arm, this one's in front, so I might do another arm like so, that one is behind, this one has an arm around this lady and this lady just has one arm showing. Mm. Yeah, for now I think that'll that'll do. Now I've got a few lines on here that I don't want so I've got a really scruffy brush just going to wet it and then the beauty of charcoal is that you can just remove what you don't want. So here we go. I want that one around. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Not as not as happy here. She's in front. Alright, what I'm doing now is going along with the charcoal. Now you can use a compressed charcoal like this or you might choose to work with something a little bit softer. I don't know, you need a thin, just a little thin 
and piece. So in here I've got uh, willow charcoal and I've also got compressed charcoals in here in various shades. So um, as we just demonstrated, charcoal is water soluble so I can shift off what I don't I don't want. But it also means that I can use it with water to get the shading that I'm after. So this time, just to demonstrate, I'm using the willow. It's a little bit softer now that I've sort of found the lines that I want. This girl here is quite dominant. She's at the forefront of everything. Better not forget her arm. This one's behind. See there, there's some that um, I don't want. We'll do the legs again too. I'm using, I can use my scruffy brush or I can use a wider flat. I want it nice and moist and then what I'm going to do is blend the charcoal. I'm going to wet it and allow it to move so that I'm getting shading. Now I'm you might have noticed that I flipped the brush there because what I'm trying to do is go from dark to light. So I'm only wanting the charcoal on one side of my flat brush. I don't want to um, make all of the girl black. If I was to go up and down and um, and get my brush completely in the charcoal, I'd just be spreading a black mess around, whereas I only want it in certain in certain spots. Now I'm trying to get into a tight area here, so I'm using the sides of my brush, and then I'm going to wash it off, so that again I'm only using one tip. So it's just a way of blending from dark to light.
ladies are outlined, a little bit of shadow work. Right, now we need to give them somewhere where they're standing. We need to ground them a little bit more. So I'm going to get my little ruler. I'm thinking I'd like the ground probably about that height. What's that? Roughly five. Is it five? Yeah. So five centimetres. I'll make sure that this one is five and another five. That should be enough. And you go back to the black. Just going to line this up. So I have my Matisse black gesso in a small container. So what I'm trying to do here is very carefully go across that ground line and here is where I can decide what the gap is between their feet. See, I feel like I've drawn that leg a little bit too wide so I'll make that a bit thinner. Now we can adjust this a little bit. Uh, later on, there we go. And as soon as we start putting in this darker black, you'll see that suddenly the figures aren't floating. They've literally been grounded by the ground. So I'm going um, along the top edge at the moment and I'll explain why. I'm just going to thin that leg down a little bit. Trying to see where I've got her legs. My light's putting a little bit of a glare on the canvas, which I hope is good, or on the paper, which I hope is good for you. It's making it a little bit trickier for me. Alright, so I've got my main edge, my ground. And you may be able to guess what I'm about to do, seeing as I was very scruffy with that. I'm going to grab another nappy wipe because I want the ground to be here. But I don't want to totally lose the colours that we already have taken the time to put down. So it's three to one. Mostly clear gesso with a little bit of white and I'm looking for my fine scruffy brush because I'm going to want to scrumble this on. So I'm just taking a very small amount on the side, patting it off so we're dry brushing. Now it's going to pick up a little bit of the charcoal because the charcoal is water soluble and it always remains water soluble unless you put a sealer on it. So by putting the highlight on this side we're saying that that's the direction that the light is actually coming from. So if these figures are outside then the sun is coming um, from the left as we look at it. Presumably they're, they're right. So if I feel like I'm getting too much charcoal, which I did, on my brush, I've just washed it, dried it, pick up a little bit more of my mix and scrumble it 
Um, it's been a little while since I um, started this piece and I'm looking at it and I've decided that this particular girl here doesn't really have a neck so what I want to do is wipe that out and we know we know that charcoal is water soluble so all I have to do is get some water and a scrubby style of brush and move the charcoal around and I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll put the neck back in. My page is starting to warp a little bit so I'm having to hold it down as I work. So tap off the excess and the highlights are coming from this side. So we're just going to dry brush a highlight in for this little one. It might be dry enough now for me to there we go. Now she's got a neck. Very good. Okay, put a little bit more of a highlight for her. Then wiping off the excess and dry brushing it. You can actually wipe some of the excess off on the other the other people as well. <coughs> right, here we go. Just adding, gonna have too much paint on that. You get a feel for this when you first start. It seems um, a little bit strange putting paint on and wiping it off, but you will get a feel for how much is too much on your brush. It's just a little bit of practice. And see, there was too much on that one, so I've just popped it in a couple of places. Now this lady here would have the most um, highlight on her. The other thing I want to do looking at her is make the arm actually look as though it belongs. It looked a little bit like it was tucked behind her so someone else was holding her arm so I'll just move that little bit of charcoal Alright, I'll let that dry and come back to it. And here we go. So put a little bit down on the legs too. Now I haven't um, attempted to try and make the legs all the same size or thickness or shape and I think with this style of artwork it's not necessary because it's that little bit whimsical so it doesn't matter if one leg is a little bit fatter or skinnier than the other it's just the illusion that the, or the indication, not really illusion, but the indication that the leg is actually there. Alright, might have been a bit much. So, what we're going to do is, again, layer in the same way as we've layered um, our background which has become the main part of the body we're going to layer how we put the highlights and details
a slightly wider flat brush. And I'm going to get a little bit of my black gesso, just a small portion. Alright, so I'm going to wet my brush, make it quite wet, and then I'm going to gradually pick up a tiny, tiny little bit of black, and I will just show you, have another piece of paper, what we're going to do is float the shadow around the people so you can see here that most of my brushes is, is wet and clear and then I'm gradually moving my brush up towards the um, gesso I'm blending it backwards and forwards on my palette and now I've got a float that's going from a dark edge to a light edge but what's important is that you must wash your brush really cle cleanly, like really well, in between picking up the extra paint. Otherwise, you just end up with a brush full of um, black paint and you won't get the float. So I'm just going to go around my edges. I've still got plenty of water in my brush and not a lot of paint, so I didn't need to wash in between. either shot glasses or throwaway communion glasses. I used to collect communion cups at church many years ago until I found I could buy them. And because I've been using um, a Dale Rowney ink in them, I know that the colour inside is not going to move. So what I've just done is sprayed a little bit of the Dilutions Lemon Zest which will continue to move and it's going to glaze and just put a nice glow. I'm not sure I want it as much up in the faces but I do want it in the, in the dress. And I'm just, yes, I'm just going to put a little bit of that in a few places too. So you can see that this one is the same but different to the last one. You can see the last one in the um, background there. Alright, so I'm going to go back to a little bit of my gesso mix. Mm. 
Again, you could float this on in the same way as we did the shadows. But the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want it a little bit scrumbly. I don't want it quite as neat and tidy as what the floating is. I sort of want the background to drop away. And I'm thinking, as I look at it, that... I'd like to get a little bit uh, more, a little bit more shadow. Still want little bits of the background to shine through. I think it needs to be a little bit darker in here. I'm just loosely holding it at the end and just doing a basic, it's almost like a scribble I guess, but just a basic line, more than one. If you just do one it looks like a mistake, if you go around something a couple of times it looks like it's meant to be. I'm actually twirling my pencil a little bit because I'm trying to keep the sharper edge and go around the hand a little bit. So now you can see that these all appear to have outfits even though I haven't actually drawn in an outfit. Now I'm swapping over to my white, same thing, and I probably will stick more to just the highlighted, just want a bit of texture where the light's hitting, so I want the dress to sort of show up, her arm, a little bit of a face there. And here she is. Uh, she might have a little bit like this side. So it's the illusion that there is a person there. It's also the illusion possibly of hair. You could put more details if you wanted to. And this one, I'm making that a little bit darker. I'll brush it in. And, uh, that arm was a bit thick for me. So what I'm going to do is bring the white, that one down. All right. So you can put as much or as little of these little highlights on as you like. If you had an ink pen and you wanted a slightly different texture, you could do that too. However, I think I'm going to call this one done. And because it's in dark, I'm going to sign in white. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. On friends.